Let's talk about Hausdorff dimension. The reason it will be well defined is predicated all on this theorem that if you have hs of a finite for some s, then for bigger powers, hta will be zero. Uh, let's uh, prove this and then we will see the consequences. So the proof is um, based on the fact that if you have A covered by EI and diameters of EI are less than or equal to tilde, which is pretty small, much less than one. So there is such coverings which estimate the HSA. That means the dia summation of diameters of EI to power S, I1 to infinity, is getting pretty close to H delta of, HS delta of A, which is bounded by the assumption. Now you have very tiny values to power S and their summation is finite. So what happens if we try to estimate HT delta. So EIs is a delta covering, so we can use them in the estimation of HT delta. Therefore, this will be diameter EI to power T's I going from one to infinity. So you have raised very tiny quantities to a bigger power, so they become smaller. Actually, we can precisely see how much smaller. So you can get I equal one to infinity. You can put diameter EI to power T minus S here, and then you multiply by diameters EI to power S because power S's are familiar. Now this will be, uh, T minus S is positive, and uh, these are numbers less than delta. So this will be each one of them will be less than delta to t minus s, and then you will have summation i equal one to infinity, diameter ei to power s. But that we said is pretty much close to h s delta of a. And then here we have delta to power t minus s. And this estimate can be arbitrarily uh, close from this, if delta goes to zero, which has to go for the definition of Hausdorff measure, uh, we end up with HT of A being arbitrarily small and therefore zero. So that's the end of the proof of this theorem. Now, interestingly, it has an easy corollary. Usually this theorem and the corollary are stated together. I don't like it because it gives the impression that they are equally difficult things to prove or not, um, but, but they are really the same thing. So the corollary is that if H S of A is finite, then for any, this time say uh, T less than S, h t of a will be plus infinity. So if you are finite at some point, for the, the values before it, you will have to be plus infinity. And the, the proof is just use contradiction. That's it, that's the end of it. So um, yeah, I have nothing to add to that. So pictorially what we have shown is the following you have so this is different uh, than the delta thing so here is the dimension you consider and here is the HS measure of your set a 
what we're saying is that if at some s you have f a finite quantity for your measure, then for all values after that, you will have zero. Um, not that zero. So you will have the zero. And for all values before that, you will have positive infinity. So you have infinity, and then at one value, critical value is you may have a finite value, and then you drop to zero. Um, this is misleading in some sense because, because uh, we may not have, so all these, this theorem and corollary were predicated on the assumption that hs of the a is finite at some point. Um, so my picture suggests that at some value you will have a positive but non-finite value. That doesn't have to be the case. Uh, example will be infinite line when the one-dimensional Hostov measure. So infinite line is not uh, any other dimension than one. And when you compute its H1 measure, it is infinite simply because it's a long line. So its length is infinite. So to be, again, emphasize, uh, this point could be either with the zero or with the infinite part. But, but the whole thing is true. So the following will be well-defined in, in light of this corollary and theorem uh, we say Hausdorff dimension of a to b so we can say supremum of all s such that h s of a is equal to plus infinity and that would agree with infimum of all s such that h s of a is zero. The picture illustrates that. And again, the, the proof why this is well defined is from the theorem and the um, corollary. We have to uh, double check if this works. Um, when one of these sets is empty. For example, you could have uh, no S for which this is infinity, then you will get supreme of infinite, uh, supreme of empty set. And because we only deal with positive values here, that supremum would be zero. So supremum of empty set is the least possible. And uh, similarly, if uh, there is no value for which HS is zero, the infimum of empty set will be plus infinity. So you could also get, so this dimension of A could also be infinite. Uh, in particular, it's interesting that it doesn't have to be an integer, uh, which we are used to when we think about dimension. So this can be anything from zero inclusive to plus infinity. Zero dimensional sets are uh, discrete ones, the countable sets and stuff like that. Lines are one dimensional and whatnot. But um, this is so satisfying. It tells us that uh, so far we had been applying HS, any S to any set. But, but this uh, is telling us that there is actually one critical dimension where uh, it makes sense to talk about this and where you might get a positive and finite number. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what Hausdorff dimension is. It's used to um, study fractals. We can talk about the uh, Hausdorff dimension of counter sets, fractals, um, snowflake, metric space, and, and many, many more things. Also, when we say boundary of a set is certain dimension in Rn, again, uh, the Hausdorff measure is an easy uh, notion of uh, making precise what we mean by dimensions. 
So if you have questions about house stroke measure, put them in the comment. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this.